can do it right this moment. But you know, we're working on a couple of things down here. <laughs> How are you? Outstanding. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's been a while, to say the least. And have you heard about our game, Blash Hill or Babcock? We try to figure it out with, just with the audio. You know, I'll tell you, a lot of people in Detroit have told me that uh, they hear Blash and they said it reminds me of them of me. You know, I, I don't really know that. I don't do a lot of evaluation of that. <laughs> Hey, we just saw Caden Primo off the board, also the son of Curtis Decision, Adam Foote. We are getting older, aren't we? It's incredible. Well, there's no question about it, and obviously, uh, you know, genetics is an interesting thing, but there's lots of guys who, who have been drafted over the last few years, especially that uh, their dads have played, and it's an exciting thing for the dads and exciting for the kids who are going to pave their own way. Hey, first of all, congratulations on an unbelievable year with the Leafs this year, nominated for the Jack Adams. You're probably going to win that one of these years. I mean, heck, you've done an unbelievable job as a coach in this league. What was it like having Austin Matthews in year number one? Well, I think obviously, uh, you know, Toronto's an exciting place to play right now. The reason it's probably so exciting is the growth for our young people, but also we've created hope in the city again about their team and there's passion and passion and fans and we're excited about that. We have a lot of good young players, obviously Matthews is the guy you talk about, but when you look at Nylander, when you look at Hyman, you look at Brown, you look at Marner, there's a ton of them and we're fortunate to have that and obviously you're here on draft rate right, trying to build on that and build on your nucleus. Now how do you avoid any type of a step backwards either for your individuals or as the group? No, oh, I think that's a great question and something we've discussed quite a bit. Is there any guarantees? No, but I think we have to improve our team as a management group. That's our job to improve our team over the summer. And so we'll do that. But also with our sports science guys to make sure that our training is going well, that guys don't rest on the laurels, that they're working hard at getting stronger and quicker and being dialed in. And the league gets tougher. That's the worst reality. As you become a dominant player in the league, you're identified and you're checked harder. So it's, it's a challenge for kids. You know, you talk about the sports science guys involved. You came into the league, you are coaching the Anaheim Ducks years ago. It's changed a lot, hasn't it? Well, just the amount of people. I just look at our coaching staff. We had one computer on our coaching staff. Now, and I think we had three guys. Now we have, you know, everyone has a computer and a laptop. You have R&D people. You have sports science people. Our sports science staff is amazing. I mean, we're working on our people before they ever get injured. It's just a whole different league today. But the competition is such that you got to go extra to, to the win in the end. So how's this event for you? And, and say yesterday, Timothy Lilligren, he gets selected. What's your conversation like with him initially? Well, I mean, I'm excited. I met his mom and his brothers. I'm excited for the kid. Now, you know, our, our, I don't know the player. I, I see him on video. They tell me they tell me what we're we're drafting. We're excited to have him because on upside potential. Now, you draft the guy and you draft him in the right spot, but it's what you do with him now as an organization to get him where you want to go. And so to me, that's a huge part of it. So we're going to get to see him ourselves at our development camp and then kind of set out a path for him over the next few years. Obviously, the quicker we can get him to an NHL player level, that doesn't mean he plays in the NHL, the quicker we can develop him. And so he's over ready when he arrives, the better off we are. On, uh, when I look at your team, obviously all those terrific forwards. You have some really good defensemen too with Riley and Gartner, but that seems to be the area where you want to get better. What can you do in the offseason to that end? Well, I think a couple of things we did already uh, by signing Borgman and Rosen, two guys who played in the Swedish League. One guy was a rookie of the year, he's a 95. The other guy, and Rosen's a year older, is an elite, elite skater. Can they step right in and play? Well, we're going to give them the opportunity but then it's up to them. So I think that's key for us. And, and there's lots of things you can do. As you can see, Hamannick went to Calgary. It's expensive to get wow. Marquis D in our league. It'd be better if you draft him and develop him and we have him coming. But D are very important. And, and if we can set ourselves up to improve in that area, we will. Mike, thank you for being a good sport with all our antics. Yes. And uh, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Tony Beck.